and we're a live band. You know, that's that's what we are. We're not a singles band. We're not a radio band. We're not a streaming band necessarily. We're we're a live band. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Spencer Chamberlain of Under Oath. How are you doing today, Spencer? Hey, man. How are you? I'm really great. Happy Friday. Yeah, man. Congratulations on Voyeurist. Your new album is out a little while now. Uh, you guys undertook a huge headline tour to promote the album. How's everything been going with you guys? It, it's been great, man. You know, it was a <clears throat> you know it was a weird time for everyone. I think over the last couple of years, and um, just being able to play live music again has been like overwhelming to say the least. You know, in the best way, not like oh my god, I can't believe we used to do this. Just like I can't believe it was that long, you know, from not playing shows to all of a sudden we're back on tour. You know, we, we did two festivals before the tour. You know, you don't really get in the swing of it until you're on like show four, five. So um, it was great. It, it was different type of touring, you know, because every everyone was bubbled up at the time. Um, it, there was a lot of COVID protocols that were still kind of, uh, they were easing up as the tour was going. So it was a little strange to be like, three days ago, people had to wear masks everywhere in the venue and um, all the fans had to, you know, show their COVID passports or their negative tests. And then three days later, you're, it's wide open and no one cares, you know? So it was a little strange to see different parts of America and how they've handled things differently or where they were at at the time. And, you know, didn't change anything. People on the tour still got sick, but, you know, what can you do? Show must go on. I love it. And, you know, of course, you know, we're all very fatigued by the last couple of years of life. And obviously, you know, I, I sincerely hope that you and the band, everybody's cool because people lost not just income like musicians and, and the music industry, but obviously people lost lives and careers and things. And some bands broke up uh, to turn it back onto ourselves a little for a second. But yeah, I'm glad you guys made it through. I don't think the fans really appreciate that even at a band at Under Oats level, you really make all your money from touring selling a record or a shirt over a table to a fan that's how you make your money vip yeah. opportunities and other things and other promo you know things that actually promote record sales like being out on the road and touring and yeah. having your name out there from city to city reminds people like oh i should get that under oath album so people don't understand i think like the regular average fan doesn't really appreciate what a blow the last couple of years have been <clears throat> to the business well, yeah. and i try to talk about it i talk about it some during the set but I talk about it, especially for the, the VIP people, speaking of VIPs, that would, they would come out to the shows and they would be asking us questions, you know, about making the record and how's it feel to be back and so on and so forth. And, and I would always express to them, like, you know, you got to think about it, like, OK, go look at the modern day, like streaming numbers. They are there are bands out there that clearly make their money off of that kind of avenue, you know, like a pop band. If there's a, there's bands out there that stream 200 times what under oath streams but doesn't sell half the tickets like there's all these weird like numbers and in, in like youtube views and instagram followers and spotify numbers but the numbers for bands like under oath that really count are the ticket sales like when you get when you get bodies in the room that's how we and, and it's so funny because we've always run our business that way it's like we were all pretty anti-social media at, at uh, different points in our career where like, you know, I looked up to people like Maynard and Trent Reznor and Tom York, people that are kind of uh, a mystery, you know, like the mystery in rock and roll is the kind of shit that I would always like think was so intriguing. And I didn't want to know what, you know, their kids were eating for dinner and stuff like that. You know, like it didn't, I, I liked the mystery. So I always try to keep that thing. And I remember we'd get in trouble with different, labels that we were on or you know people would always question like why does the opening band have a million followers and you guys have a hundred thousand or whatever you know stuff like that but the ticket sales is all that mattered you know always it's like under is going to sell out the shows you know like you know it's always going to be a huge turnout like our fans are awesome but then boom COVID happens and then you don't have those things to lean on and it does get tough because we aren't the kind of band that you stream every day in your car, you know, like maybe you would, you know, a different genre of music um, or a band that has more like single based music. But for a band like Under Oath, it's not, 
really our bread and butter. You know, we're not releasing singles. We're not featuring artists on every track. We're a band more that's like, we're making albums and we're touring. Like we grew up that way. Like we started off in VFW halls and basement shows and you would get your name out there by playing in front of an audience who was there to see a band that's bigger than you, you know, like we're on tour with 18 visions and we're opening up. So people are going to see us and that's how they're going to find out about us. We're on tour with boys in the well. That's how they're going to see us, you know, so on and so forth. Um, that was always our mentality. And it's kind of stuck through that as we, you know, made our own name and became popular to whatever degree you want to call it. Um, and, uh, it's always been, that's how we provide for our families is, is the live show. So, uh, two year, two and a half years without playing live was, was, was not a fun place to be and not because it's just your bread and butter, but because it's like, that's what we've known, you know, our whole life. Like, that's how we've always done this. It's like you tour, you play music and there's, there's no feeling that can replicate what it is to be on stage, you know? So, um, it, it's incredible to, to be back that to be able to do it again and uh yeah word and i'm so pleased for you and again in my mind under oath started before the streaming era really obviously there was way before pirating and and torrenting you know limewire and bear share way back before you got into you know as you were your nascent bands and before under oath and when under oath started you you know like cds were still the thing the thing uh, it, it's wild to me that vinyl has made a huge comeback. You guys have always had a very tight merge game, which I always appreciate. Love seeing the Under Oath shirts at all the shows. and uh, But I think of this band as a live band also. So that's really, yeah. as much as I appreciate these albums, and I love Voyeurist, and we'll talk about it in a second, I do think of this band like where you really ply your trade is live. You communicate really well to the fans, and the fan base is very ravenous right back. So that's you know a really great symbiotic relationship. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I say that in just about every VIP and about every show is that we are, we're a live band. You know, that's, that's what we are. We're not a singles band. We're not a radio band. We're not a streaming band necessarily. We're, we're a live band, you know, like Under Oath is more of like, um, I don't know, it's like an experience with, with the fan. Like, I, like, I feel like when I look out in the crowd and we're playing, it's like those people, those kids, are as much of the show as we are because what they give us amplifies what we give back like we're always going to give a hundred percent but when the fans start to become it you know and they're crowd surfing and they're moshing and they're singing every word you know like you feel that and it's like dude we're all a part of this same thing right now it's like whatever you know it, it's like whatever song we're playing it doesn't really matter that moment it's the fact that there's that energy in the room and everyone's a part of that experience that night in Atlanta or that night in Philadelphia, wherever you are, it's like, uh, it, that it's just, it's very important to us. And I think that's always been our, our, our thing is just, we're a live band, you know? Indeed. Um, obviously, you know, again, it's been great to have the return of shows. I'm in Northern California. I've been extremely fortunate to go to a lot of shows. Not everybody is so lucky, but I am hopefully, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that we're gonna just keep slowly improving and get our sense of normalcy back. I don't want right. to accept whatever the the previous thing was. I don't I don't believe in new normals, even though you have to adapt as a person. But I I was like you know we can get it back. You know like very hopeful. And, I'm hopeful. Uh, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I I know there's a bunch of festivals. It's festival season, so like you know yeah. so summertime hope springs eternal and summer always you know brings brings the good times and the fun you know takes me back to warp tour and mayhem fest and oz fests and things like that and not fest yeah. so yeah. at least here in the states and obviously europe also is a huge you know things are well opened up they actually i think had a really good model for how to like dip a toe in the water last june and july and now you see the full european summer festival season is back and uh, we're we also have like a footprint in europe we started there actually so as a as a website so i'm and a zine so i'm really pleased to see you our coverage is ramping up in europe again like those things are coming back download the full download fest the crazy hell fest everything's going to be nuts this summer yeah that's awesome yeah we're going to be like vikings parading you know like raiding the village coming off the boat and yeah. uh store i said even just going to see your friends at the local spot you know just going out for a casual night was going to be like wild <laughs> yeah yeah people are people are celebrating you know we we would ask that question too like uh, is this 
everyone's first show back since COVID, you know, and it was pretty split. A lot of people had already gone to shows and stuff, depending on where you were, but we'd have a good, you know, percentage of people that were saying it was their first back as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I went to a show last night. So, you know, it's like, what did you see? Uh, nine, nine snails last night oh killer right of course so that's amazing i know that tour you know has been on and off for a couple of years and and uh so i think also speaking of mystery like you said about trent also when you don't have as full a touring schedule like i feel like you know whatever they're gonna play six seven dates the whole year it's an event it's a huge event right so that's amazing yeah it was incredible we went last night and uh it was like the set list was just great. It was just so many good songs and unexpected and expected, like, like the songs you want to hear and then songs that you're like, oh man, I'm so glad they played that. It was it was, it was so sick. Um, nice, nice. Did you get to check out uh, Boy Harsher, the opener? I dude, so I'm always down to check out an opener because I've been that guy a million times in my life. But we got there. I didn't think they were going to go on until at least nine, you know, like nine inch nails, but I guess they were going on eight 30 and I thought doors were at seven. So I was like, I don't know at what point that they played because we were parking before eight. I got in at like eight ish, you know? Um, and they were, the opening band was already cleared off the stage. I, I don't know. I, I missed all of it. somehow. Rats great band. And they have a killer new album out. Uh, I highly I'll recommend check it out. Yeah, yeah, they're very, very much in the set, in this the vein of of uh, health, and a bunch of other bands, you know, killer band, perturbator, and similar synthy wave bands, the modern synth wave bands that I really dig. It's very to me like the new punk rock is the synth wave. I, I'm a I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah. So killer, have. killer stuff. Now that Voyeurist has been out a little while, and you've had a little chance to perform some of these songs live and live with the album, and the fans have lived with the album now. For a little bit i thought it would be fun for us to do a little track by track uh freeform association i'll i'll spout out the song titles and you can just give whatever feedback and feelings you have on on these tracks now that you know you've had a little time i know it's always kind of like i talked to a band yesterday it was like our album is out and i'm sick of it already and i'm already writing the new one i hate the album once it's done and i was like that's refreshing because no one ever says everybody says this next album is my favorite album or our best album no one ever says now that it's done i'm relieved and i hate it yeah <laughs> so props to them but anyway uh voyeurist right uh you know I, i've been living with this album actually even before obviously it dropped i'm in the press i got a copy early yeah. and um i've spent a lot of time listening to it as we've you know pursued getting together with you so this is going to be fun for me too uh yeah. the the album starts off with damn excuses i can still remember us writing that track in the studio um so we wrote the record and demoed the record the same place where we made the final product and uh because we did this record ourselves this is our first self-produced album so uh, the four of us that write uh were in the room and we were just we were referencing, there was a couple of different references going around, but we wanted to, we were referencing our own song, Breathing in a New Mentality, because that song live, speaking of being a live band, we're always like, you know, that was never a single or anything, or did, there wasn't a video for it, you know, um, but that song we still play live because the, 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 the audience tends to love it. Like they go off super hard on that song. So we wanted to write a song in that lane of like, how can we outdo that? You know, like, is it possible to ever replace that song live in a set list? Or are we just adding to it another super heavy song? But that was uh, the the goal with that song. And um, I think we were referencing, which is really, really silly to think about, because we don't ever really talk about heavy bands in the studio. Uh, we don't really listen to much heavy music because we're always surrounded by it. But we were, we were actually kind of uh, the intro being uh kind of a vibe from a, a run the jewels song so uh i think it's pretty funny because if you heard you know when you listen to under oath you don't ever think run the jewels but we were like there was something about that you know repetition of the beat just drilling you in the face with a fast vocal you know and if you listen to it and you think about like a bunch of dudes that play heavy music if you like oh i could kind of see it now you know it's like there's not much room for me to even breathe in that beginning. It's almost like 
if it was put in a different format, that could be a wrap, you know, like, so that was kind of the idea there, but just aggressive. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite songs to play live, just because even if you don't know it, people are moving, but it is a fucking breath. It's like, you're, if you don't, if I don't breathe in the right spaces, cause I'm excited and like running around on stage and it's normally what we open with, uh, since we dropped it and it's like if I'm not breathing at the right place I'm I'm gonna get lightheaded so <laughs> you gotta watch that and uh, it's a whole mood for sure and and I think hardcore and metal vocals are not that far removed from rapping you got, I'm sure you got bars I know you could do it um <laughs> the the second track is the big single hallelujah yeah I love this song man it, it's uh another song that in the writing process was referencing ripping ourselves off and it sounds nothing like it, but I was moving. Um, I was in one of those moving trucks, like the ones that you rent yourself and, and, you know, it's too big and it only goes like 60 miles per hour and it, and it has an AM FM radio. So I was just like, just thinking about stuff like this was during COVID and we hadn't played in forever. And I was just thinking about songs and like what people react to and, um, and I remember calling Aaron and just being like, dude, let's rip off, you know, like Dangerous Business, for example, the, the, the choir, everyone celebrates that part live. And, and it's a moment, it's right before the breakdown until the end, and it's like the end of the song. I was like, what if we made a song that that was the song? Like the song is based off a choir. And then we you know, we, you know, between Chris and myself and Aaron. And then there was another thing that I was kind of thinking about when we were talking about what the melody was going to be. And it sounded, it ended up turning out nothing like it, but I wanted it to be creepy. Um, what's the fucking movie? Um, oh, there, it's uh, Us. Have you seen that movie? Yep. And you know the beginning where it's almost like a satanic sounding choir? Mm that was an inspiration to behind the, the 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 idea of a choir chorus like the song opening up with it and just like the movie opens up with it you know and then and then into like that what if that's our chorus what if it's not me or Aaron singing this big wild melody it's the choir you know so the idea of that was kind of based off that movie and uh our own song so um pretty cool Nice. The third track is I'm pretty sure I'm out of luck and I have no friends. Yeah. Oh my God. Gosh. Uh, oh, and back to Hallelujah is my favorite song to play live right now because, oh, sure. because there's nothing better than seeing people sing along as loud to that as they do a song that's been out for like 15 years. Like it, it really if I'm being honest now, like talking about the tour and the record, nothing is more motivational and inspiring to keep a band. Cause we, and, you know, we're humans too. Like we have, even when we're back on tour, like you have good days and bad days, like people battle with depression, anxiety, all sorts of things, no matter how good life gets in your, you know, family and everything, everything's online. Like you still have off days and sometimes like, you can play a weird place and the crowd just seems like they're not into it. And you're like, man, do they not like us anymore or whatever? And, we, and when we play hallelujah and they are singing that as loud as they sing like boy rush red or, or whatever. It's like, dude, it, it really, it's enough to where we're not the kind of band that gets off stage and talks about ourselves a lot. Like on the bus, like no one really hugs each other and says, good job, man, you killed it tonight. Like, our band doesn't do that shit. Like no one even like acknowledges each other as far as that kind of stuff. Like you did a great job, you know, lifting the crowd up and getting everyone to jump or dude, your drums, you know, like you were on it. To, like, no, we don't do that. Like we don't even really talk about it, but the, the stuff like that to where, you know, you'll have like someone like James or Tim even be like, dude, hallelujah. Right. You know, like they sing that just as loud as something else. That's the kind of stuff that keeps, you know, I for me seeing it as the guy that was, you know, before we broke up last time, I was the last guy standing, like trying to keep the band going and stuff. And I get how hard it can be on families and personal life. And that kind of stuff to me just makes me feel like so 
like like we're doing the right thing like we're we're like and our fans really are listening and they really do support us because like you come off the stage and in and people on the bus are mentioning like oh man like they were singing hallelujah just as loud as dangerous business tonight like that stuff we notice it and like when the fans are doing that like that shit goes a long way like more than i can even explain on this interview because our band doesn't talk about stuff like this and i like just noticing on this tour being talked about several times made me feel like okay no matter how hard these years go like that's the kind of stuff that keeps the band motivated you know so big ups for everyone coming out and singing hallelujah with us this this year word it's been incredible it's and it's great to have that when you have a new record drop and you have a big song that you know succeeds at the streaming and then it carries over you see that the fans city to city yeah that up i too. have no idea about the streaming i stopped paying attention to that oh. stuff a long time ago but i i do know that the the I see it in the in the live shows. I'm like, what songs are singing more? You know, yeah, killer. You would know if anyone would know, it would be you. So, uh, <laughs> right, right back to the third song there. I'm pretty sure I'm out of luck and have no friends. I feel like you need a hug right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a dark song. It's a it's. I really want to play it live, but it's it's like full of polyrhythms and weird time signatures, and it's like one wrong move and it's like falling down a staircase i think <laughs> for the rhythm section for drums and bass um hopefully we will add that to the set list in the near future but that's one of my favorite ones on the record um and i think it's it's not a traditional song it's not verse chorus first chorus bridge chorus uh, it's just a journey and uh the fact that that song the lyrics in that song the story takes place as long as the song is and i've never done that before like i wrote about something that so the song's like what four or something minutes long like that moment of that period of time and what i'm saying is what i actually felt and went through in that amount of time if that makes any sense as opposed to like most songs are like this is about a a you know like you write about this thing that could have been a feeling for months or years or things that you've struggled with or things you feel about still to this day that song takes place in that amount of time so it's they, we've never done that before nice the fourth song one of my favorites personally is cycle featuring ghost main yeah what a wild what a wild ride that that was um that song went through the most changes i feel like like we had me and aaron had tracked a bridge and we don't do features we haven't done a feature since they're only chasing safety and we talked about it and, you know, cause there's, there's two vocals, there's two mouths on the record anyway. So it's not like you need a break, you know, it's like, it's kind of like you got two different voices going back and forth a lot. You know, it's like, it's hard to throw a third in there. So we don't tend to do it a lot, but we, we had a conversation of if we're going to do it, it, it shouldn't be one of our friends from the scene. If that makes any sense. Like, I know any of our homies could have like ripped that, you know, like not that particular what Ghostman did, but like that bridge, you know, like, and we've got a, but I was like, I don't know, it, it either needs to be someone like, like Maynard or, or like Chino or like Zach from Rage Against the Machine, someone that's like, like one of our idols and like way beyond our band, or it needs to be something like completely out of left field. And we had talked about run the jewels and other things like that mentioning that band again uh that uh but ghost Maiden came up and we actually had like a connection with him and uh an in to try to like communicate with him um and i'm just i'm i was i'm so shocked about what so what, what we did is we recorded the song and we recorded our own bridge me and aaron did a bridge and i don't even remember what it sounds like anymore but it's somewhere on the hard drive. And then when we sent him the song, we deleted our bridge. It was just in case, like maybe he never gets back to us or doesn't get done in time. Um, and we deleted those lyrics out of what we sent to him. You know, so we sent him all the lyrics minus the bridge. So we were like, do your own thing. Here's what the song is. Here's what it's about. Draw your own conclusions by reading the lyrics that me and Aaron wrote and have at it. And he sent us back pretty much exactly what you hear on the record. So he, he murdered it for for sure and i do and, I, and i'm with you like i want to the reason another reason i don't really like features is like what do you do live like 
like that's weird you know like all these people that have all these features like how do you ever play live i guess you know either i sing the part or we put it on a track but i do want to play play that song live because i love the way that chorus feels um there's something about that song that that to me is like the one of the most like depressing like scary kind of feelings out of any song we've written like when i listen to it now i i still like get like kind of goosebumpy like like ugh, you know like we were in a rough place like you know at, at that particular moment i feel you i feel you the fifth track is thorn yeah this this song i, I you know we've been playing it live because we had pe people vote on what song they wanted to hear uh we gave them a short list and that song won by like a landslide. So I'm just pumped to see that people reacted to that song. I thought they would react to that song. Um, I think our management didn't think it, 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 it would, but I think that's like an unsung hero on the record. I think that maybe should have been a single um, because it seems to be a fan favorite. So I don't know. I like that. I like that song a lot. I like the chorus. I like, the vibe of that that track that was a fun one to write if i if i remember correctly I remember me and aaron so we tend to write all the music the four of us aaron chris tim and myself and then me and aaron tend to go back to our airbnb and like we'll take the demo and we'll just like fuck around like we'll open up we'll drop the music in and, and like literally pick up like a mic like a regular mic like this you know, like a live mic not like a studio mic and we'll pass it back and forth like I guess you call it like scatting is what people are or whatever. Like it's like it's gibberish. Like we're just trying to come up with melodies and rhythms until we get where we like, and then we'll write lyrics. And I remember us working on that chorus. We had a chorus and it was good. And we had another chorus that was good. And then like before there was like, okay, let's lay that down. It's like, wait a minute. What, you know? And then we had like spitballed into this thing that was like, oh my God, like we've got it. Like once, once we landed on that chorus, it was just, it felt like the, you know, the whole song, the the roof blew off of it. So uh, it was just fun. Like, I remember how excited we got as it was like unraveling, you know, it was like, it feels like a little kid opening presents on Christmas. It's like, oh my God, it keeps getting better. And then, oh, you know, like, so it was, it was really fun to write that. I remember, I, I will never forget sitting at that table and like me and Aaron kept passing it back and forth until we got it right. Like just how excited we were when, when it like, pushing play and listen to it back like that's it and then when we got the lyrics right we were we were just like that yeah that's the one so um unfortunately to the label and the management it wasn't the one but we thought it was the one <laughs> well there you go you were proven right at least as, as far as the fans are concerned which yeah, at the end of the day it, yeah all that matters exactly uh as we get to the back half of the record no oasis is next yeah that was a song that was just going to be like uh, you know, that's Chris pretty much through and through. And I don't know if it was supposed to, if it was supposed to be just a song by itself or it was going to build into something. But I remember I was having a conversation is like, what if it went nowhere? You know, what if it never went, oh, under oath, it's going to get big and loud and heavy. And like, we do that so much. And then there was talks of it being like, oh, but we don't want it to turn into like one of those like too bright to see songs. Like we've done that before and uh I, I just love that it turned out to be this like creepy like it's almost like you get a break in the record like but it's just so fucked up that you don't like you're just like it's uncomfortable in the best way and i love the drums that aaron did with jj that are who helped engineer the record who's our front of house guy um it, it's just like it's just got a really weird vibe to it and i um I, I dig that. Proud Word. of that. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, Chris is the most improved player. I think he's literally his complete like work ethic to his skill sets have, have gone from the guy that we have to figure out how to fit, you know, a keyboard part into a song to the guy who is like, scoring movies and he's so good to where we start taking stuff away from our songs to because it's like we don't even need guitars on this part because chris has created this soundscape that's like you know next level so yeah that chris 
Chris has become such a huge part in the songwriting to where um, it's just really elevated the band a lot, in my opinion. Nice. Nice. Take a Breath is the seventh track. Yeah, another song that I want to play live. I, um, nope. My phone decided it wants to hear that song right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a Breath is one of the first ones we wrote for this record, I think. And um, yeah, it didn't really change. I don't think it changed at all from the demo. I remember correctly. No, I don't think so. Yeah, and that song just punches you in the face. I don't think it would be a fun one to play live, um, depending on how many of our fans have actually listened to it yet or not. Uh, I think it could be a really cool song live. Word. I agree. Uh, We're all gonna die. <laughs> it's a very ominous next track. Yeah, that that song's really on the nose, which is um, not typical of Under Oath. Like we don't typically write lyrics like that. Me and Aaron have always done the like mysterious game and super poetic, and that those were placeholder lyrics on the chorus. And when we wrote the chorus. It was just to get the vibe. Like we're, I'm all about feel. I, I want it to vibrate. Like be it the drums, the guitar. Like we're making a song. The music's got to vibe so hard that even before the vocals get on it, you've got like I'm looking for goosebumps. I'm looking for like obvious headbangs. Like I can't stop bobbing. Like like while while I'm listening, like it's got to be into that level before we lay down the vocals. And then we were laying down the vocals. Actually, it's one of the first choruses we wrote for the record that was from a different demo. We did that on tour. Cause it's funny because people think it's a COVID song, which it's not because we wrote that and tracked the first demo vocal, which is those lyrics um, in a hotel room. We were on tour with Corn and Alice and Chains. So that was summer of 19. I have to look back with it. That tour was summer of 18 or 19. I think it was one of the last tours we did before COVID. Either way, anywho. Um, and it, it's not a COVID song at all. It's, it's, you know, it's, and it's kind of on the nose, just it's super like straightforward. Um, and then when we went, it kind of made some of the guys uncomfortable and I'm totally fine having conversations with other band members, even the guys that don't write and be like, Hey, if you're uncomfortable, we'll try something else, you know, and we're going to try all these things. But if it's not better than that, if we can honestly, honestly have a conversation like i don't care where your religious standpoint is or where your family values or where you're at right now personally if it if it doesn't sound and feel better than that you know we're not going to make it worse you know um because me and aaron got to the point where we're like maybe this is the the lyrics like these are it it feels so good you know and then we tried a bunch of different stuff for the sake of a few guys being uncomfortable. And even those guys are like, nah, it was right the first time, you know? And that was the same thing that happened on cycle going back to cycle was, um, uh, stuck in my head. It's a goddamn maze. And we tried, you know, like, cause there are a few guys that are still Christians in the band. And I was like, if that's, you know, I don't, I'm not here to offend everybody. Like that moment of like, I feel like when you hit the wall and you're like at wit's end, you're not, whether you're a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or whatever, in my, I don't think that you're censoring yourself. You know, I think you're like, fuck, I, this is a goddamn maze. Like, fucking get me out of here. You know, like that moment of like, you're like, hit the wall. And that's what that song is. The cycle song is more of that's just like, what the fuck? And, um, so that's how the lyrics came out. Cause in the booth, it was like, this is how I'm, it's like, I'm coming out of me. Like I try to make it as real as possible. Like I write real lyrics, Aaron writes real lyrics. We write them together and we like, if it's not true, we don't write about it. So that's why it feels so real. And then when you track it, it's like, man, that was the performance. It's like you can feel it in the performance. And then someone goes, I'm uncomfortable. Okay. But we'll try A, B, C, D, E. You got any other suggestions? F, you know, what, how far do we need to go? And then, and then everyone listens and be like, it's still that one. Like that's so honest and it's so real. Like we're never doing anything to make people uncomfortable because we were a Christian man and now we're not, we're not trying to rub anyone the wrong way or, or rustle the feathers or whatever. Like 
it's just honesty. And like, I feel like a lot of heavy music comes from that dark place. And when you're at that wall or at that bottom, you like, it's like, if you stub your toe, you don't go, Oh, dang, you know, you go, fuck, you know, like, or, you know what I mean? Like, so I know that's a stupid example, stubbing your toe, but I feel like being in, the, in those, it, it, in those moments and in those feelings of like you're in your head thinking these things so when it comes out you say it if you offend someone i'm sorry but if it's not better by censoring it we're not going to censor it you know so right that's kind of where we land right on good yeah. stuff thanks for sharing all that uh as we close this down numb is the next to last track numb is uh the second song we wrote for the record uh i love it i love that aaron's drumming just doesn't stop i love that uh it, he's so exhausted that he doesn't want to play it live but i think kids love that song that the chorus is is fantastic and i love like it's you know that's kind of got a rap feel to it as well to me like the the sporadic like in your face kind of vocal um on the verses and stuff that song's got a lot of feels to it as well i i mean I'm really proud of this record. It's, I know, like you said earlier, like Ben said all the time, it's your favorite record. It truly is my favorite Unearthed record because we didn't have a producer. We didn't have a guy mediating and making the band find middle ground and compromise with each other. We actually got to the point where the four, four of us got to, we were like, there's not a moment on the record I don't like, you know, like, and there's always moments on every record before that is the part that I compromise with that fucking hate that part, or I don't like that. Or I did. and everyone and each guy in the band has that same thing. And uh, this record doesn't have that because we made it ourselves and we had the time to keep pushing and digging until like, man, I love this, but Tim hates it. And we're, now we're trying something that Tim's way that I don't like and was fine in the first place. But when we get to the end of it, after we've, fully flushed it out and then Chris starts changing it and then Aaron changes it and then I change it more because I was unhappy with it over here then all of a sudden we're doing this new outcome now all of a sudden we're like looking around all of us dig it and I think that's something that hasn't been able to happen all the time I mean it definitely has happened on records but uh, not all the time on every song because you don't have time and you're paying some guy a lot of money to be there and he's supposed to help you get there faster and sometimes for under oath I feel like it, it is it it is it necessarily faster and there's too many cooks in the kitchen as it is so every song on this record i'm i'm 100 percent like happy with so nice and then speaking of the final song pneumonia my favorite song to play right now um it's a heavy heavy song topic wise and um i love that it's just so free a song that I think would not have happened with a producer as well as, you know, like I'm pretty sure I'm out of luck and have no friends, like songs like that, that you kind of get to a point where you just, you're letting the song do what it needs to do. And now you're chasing this, the song's feelings, not necessarily your own. And it takes on a life of its own and we don't even know how we got to the end, but somehow we're here like in the writing process. And uh, it's a song that like took a lot of time to let it, be what it was you know and and it turned out to be one of my favorite unreal songs of all time killer yeah what a killer uh, way to close out an album too just very strong finish and uh yeah it definitely puts a an exclamation point on everything thanks for sharing all that that was great of okay. course as as we uh you know wind this down and obviously under oath has a lot of stuff on tap for the rest of the year but just to get the crystal ball out for a second 2023 is going to be the start of what's probably going to be a bunch of band diversities for you guys the next few years you are in the band almost 20 years uh you know the chasing safety album's got a big one coming up do you have any any hints or thoughts about you know celebrating those times or you know maybe special releases or tours i don't know uh i mean we did that with rebirth not too long ago um i feel like it's too soon i, I don't know i feel like there may be shows or performances i don't think full tours i, I mean i don't there's no telling you know the touring world's changed some too i don't know if it's permanently changed but you know, like half the tour buses are gone. So the prices are up production, half of those places shut down. So prices are up and everyone's competing for this, that, and the other. And 
Um, I don't know. I, I mean, in the future, you know, things could level back out and who knows, but uh, I think that our goal is to, to make more music, but you know, that we just started touring on this record. So I'm not even thinking about the next one. And um, I'm hoping there'll be more tours and festivals off this record. And then potentially maybe some shows for a 20 year thing. If, if that's, you know, that's a couple years away still. So um, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that. I know we talked about it for for something and everyone was just like, it's too soon. You know, like someone had asked us to do like two nights and one of them, one of them wanted to be album specific. And, and like, what if we celebrate is like, we just, no, it's too soon. Like we already did that. And I know people will be stoked, but it's, it's not the right time to do that kind of stuff. We don't, we don't, we're not like nostalgia, nostalgia, let's cash in. Like we don't, we want to like, you know, be a band, you know, you don't talk about that with, you know, Nine Inch Nails or Metallica or, you know what I mean? Like bands, Foo Fighters, like stuff that's been around forever. It's not nostalgia to this, nostalgia to that. Like a lot of bands in our genre, I think, get stuck in that and, and get pigeonholed as like 10 year anniversary, 15 anniversary, 20 year anniversary, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's fun, but I, I think we try to like, just for like be progressive and, and, you know, I don't know. But that being said, I don't see it being out of the question. I just think that our focus is somewhere else, probably. You know, yeah. you know. But I got I've got my first solo record coming out this year as well, so I'll be doing a lot of stuff with that as well. So awesome! That's really exciting. Also, we'll get to that another time. But uh, yeah, let's continue to celebrate how Slam and Voyeurs came out, and just all the best success to you and the guys. And congratulations. Thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Cult. I really appreciate you, Spencer. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks.